Alrighty, hello, this is Randy with Excel for Business and we're gonna go over the uh, bids add-on tutorial for the labor burden calculator. All right, if you have a copy of the labor burden calculator, you'll wanna make sure you have already activated your copy because this is an add-on to the paid version. Once you have activated your version on the setup screen and admin screen here, you will see the activate bids feature now button. So you want to go ahead and click that and make sure you copy the license number that you have received in the email. All right. Once you've copied that, we'll go ahead and paste that in here. Control V and paste. That's my license. So we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and click to register. And what that's going to do is that's going to register your application and it's going to add the bids feature onto the menu bar up here. All right. Once it's been registered, you get this pop up asking uh, if you would like to view the tutorial for now, we'll say no. All right, and once you have activated, you'll see this new menu option here called bids. Okay, that comes with uh, three sub menu options, add bids, list of bids, and expense item list. Now every company is different, so I have programmed this to accommodate uh, different requirements. Some companies use estimates, others use proposals, others use job costing. So you have the ability to completely customize it when you scroll over to the right in the admin screen, under bid settings here, which you will see once activated, you'll have the option. So we can call this uh, anything we want. Uh, let's go ahead and change that to estimates. Once it's been changed to estimates, you'll now see the menu items change and this estimates will be changed throughout the application. So it's got a lot of customization features. So why don't we go, we can go into here, but before we do that, let me just go ahead and show you a few more options in uh, for the estimates. For this bid feature, we can set the initial estimate number. All right, in case you've been using estimates and you want to continue with this software and you want to start off at another number, you can simply enter that number and then click set and that will set your estimate number at whatever you'd like to use. We also have the ideal profit margin and a minimum profit margin. Okay, setting these two items allows color coding like green and yellow like you see above so that when bids come in at or above an ideal profit margin of 20% in this case, that field will turn green. When they're at or above the minimum and below the ideal, they'll be yellow. And below the minimum, they will be red. So that's really gonna be helpful uh, to quickly see where you're at as you create uh, these bids or estimates. We also have default markups, so we can change these to whatever we want uh, on um, both materials and labor. And then we have expense types. Expense types are really helpful breakout. Uh, often you do specific jobs or specific types of works where you have different expense types. So you can type anything here you would like to. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add uh, plumbing and electrical. And so what this does is when we assign expenses, we can then assign an expense type to those expenses. Uh, labor is already included, so you wouldn't want to put labor in because I've already included that in another area. Okay. And now, if once we go into the labor burden calculator domain, I've uh, set up one employee here, but we'll go ahead and set up a few more uh, just for testing purposes. And uh, we'll do that simply giving them an hourly rate. And we can go ahead and add in some vacation hours, some sick hours and holiday hours, and maybe some health insurance costs. Okay, so that we've got a, now we've got an hourly rate and we'll go ahead and save that. Now we've got an actual hourly cost here of 2510 for this. And if we set up overhead, our hourly cost will be higher. So let's go ahead and set up just a little bit of overhead so we can see how the, that changes. Back into the admin screen, we have a company overhead item. So we'll go ahead and add in a lease and uh, we'll say we have a monthly lease of overhead of, of $2,000 and we have utilities also in overhead. Uh, for uh, let's go ahead and call it monthly as well and let's say that's at 200 okay so that gives us a total annual overhead of 26,400 and this is important because overhead must also be accounted for both when we are uh, working on the actual hourly cost and when we incorporate them into estimates or bid and now you can see the total hourly cost has gone up to 3262. As we add employees, this number will reduce because your overhead is spread across 
uh, employees, not necessarily evenly. It's based upon the actual hours they work. So that's a very important. Okay, let's go ahead and add one more employee in. And uh, that way we can have three different employees which we can choose from. And uh, let's go ahead and give uh, uh, Lisa a salary. And uh, we'll go ahead and salary amount of $60,000 annually. Okay. And uh, we'll select annual here. Okay. So now that we've saved Lisa, we can give her some vacation and uh, health insurance as well. And so now that we have Lisa saved, we have an hourly cost for her of 40. Okay. And uh, with uh, overhead is 45 so that's all calculated now we can assign a billing rate we have a couple options here we can assign a billing rate uh, to Lisa or we can also use the automatic markup so we've got a few options here if you don't normally charge per hour uh, you can leave this blank if you do you can set up so we'll go ahead and let's go ahead and add in a $75 rate so we see now that our profit is $34 when we're not considering overhead and our profit is 29.78 when we are considering overhead okay so now we, we've got each of these uh, employees set up we can go back into our new estimates feature and let's go into do an expense list before we go into the admins and let's go ahead and set up a few expense items right now uh, we have one item plumbing supplies and we just enter that into plumbing okay these are the expense types that we set up on the admin screen the more items you set up the more they will appear here as far as those expense types and we can enter electrical and then a description and then we can go ahead and give that a, an expense type as well all right and uh, we can set a default quantity if we want, but we can leave that blank. Uh, default quantities, when we're creating bids, default quantities come automatically. And we have a cost. Let's go ahead and give this a cost of uh, $100. And you'll see the, the default sales price automatically uh, turn to 115 because we have that automatically set as uh, the default markup. But you can change this as well. However, if there's a price in here already and you change this, right? it won't change it won't change so it assumes that if you've put a price in there you want to keep a price however if you clear that out right then it then it assumes that you may want to use the the default markup so you have a lot of flexibility with these items here all right and next up we can just uh, include uh, let's call this uh, paint and uh, miscellaneous paint okay so we can pretty much do uh, whatever we want with that and we can just call that supplies and set that as $50 okay so it's really fast the default markup is up here 15 that's what we set it at in the admin screen so you can set up as many uh, expense items as you want and they're really helpful because you can, once they're set up you can quickly uh, create estimates now let's go ahead into the add estimates screen here and you'll see everything is considered estimate estimate name these all these change based upon the name you've given it okay we can quickly create an estimate very easily just enter an estimate name and details here notes there you can give it and here what we can do is we can select from two types of items whether if it's labor okay we can then select what employee is going to be used in this. So, okay, let's say if it's Lisa Smith and her hourly cost uh, amount is here, so we can just enter 10. Okay, if it's, uh, and this amount is brought in from the um, labor burden calculator. Next up, we can also assign another employee here, uh, also in labor. And let's go ahead and say we say uh, David Davis here. We also can give him 10 hours, but he's an hourly uh, employee, so uh, we have him at 2510, and that's the hourly cost. Since he's an hourly, we can double click it, and we can also get an overtime rate. By double clicking here, that changes his to an overtime rate, so we can set his overtime. For now, we'll just go back to the regular rate, and automatically the sales or billing price is updated based on your markup, okay, based on that labor markup which is 20 percent here okay you can change that here if you want to change it for a specific estimate or bid you can change it here okay but if you want to set it as to default as the way you've set it up in your admin you can just leave it as is all right let's go ahead and add in some expense items now all we have to do is simply click the expense item as the type
And then the drop down list changes to the items we have set up in our estimate. Okay, we have plumbing supplies, and you see the default one come up. Uh, we can uh, also click on electrical. Here we did not set a default, so that's left blank. And it's very quick, very easy to quickly create bids. All right, you can create these lists very, very uh, rapidly because and accurately because they've already been preset up. Once you've got everything you want, just say click save and update bid, and the and the uh, bid is updated automatically. We have a created on, we have a last update, and we have a created by. Now this created by is actually automated for you, and you can see where this name comes from when you go into file, okay, and in options. All right, you see there's a username here. That's where it comes from, right under that. So that's a quick way to understand exactly where the username, you can change it there as well. You can have the ability to navigate uh, to different estimates by using here, but we've only have one bid created, so uh, we're not gonna be able to navigate anywhere. We've got a summary here, which is quite helpful. It tells us how many regular hours, how many overtime hours, labor, as well as the cost of those items and the sales price, which is really helpful. All right, we have expenses by type detailed here. And then remember we have also here, we mentioned the color coding, okay? Our ideal profit margin we had set up back in the admin screen, and this is actually below it. But uh, if we go ahead and uh, we increase perhaps some of the uh, labor hours, you'll see that that, that number changes, right? Uh, depending upon our, our markups and depending upon our, so if we were to change that to 40, oh, that's not gonna, still now we have a lower markup. But if we reduce, if we reduce it or we increase that sales price, you'll see. So let's go ahead and increase that. Let's say we're gonna charge $50 an hour. Okay, because that's pretty low. And now you'll see a change. Now we've got a 27% net profit and it changed to green. And that's based on what you have set as your ideal profit. All right. And so that means our 27% is, I think we set it at 20%. So 27% is why it's in green. That's above it. So this is a great way. We have our uh, detailed expense list here below here, as well as our summary here. This is including overhead and excluding overhead. And so as you fill out the overhead, and the reason is, is our overhead based upon the number of hours on this project, okay? Let's say, let's say we have bid this hours for, we have 50 total hours, okay? And let's say uh, for some reason, those 50 hours were uh, one one hundredth or one percent of the total labor hours in a year. Okay, it would take those one one hundred of one one hundredth or one percent of your overhead, and it would consider that one percent right here. In this case, we're using just under one percentage of our overhead, which is two hundred and forty four forty four. So the over allocation is really critical. Uh, and you should be adding that in your estimates, bid, and job. So that's a very important part of it. When we go to print these, we can simply uh, print them, email them, or save them as a PDF. And there may be times when you want to print it, but you want to hide the cost columns. Okay, So we can select that, and it's going to hide it. There may be times when we want to actually show the cost, but hide the sales columns. So we can click that here. And if we want to show both, we can do that here. So let's say if we are uh, want to email it to a customer, we can uh, hide the cost columns and then click email. Once we click email, automatically a PDF is going to be generated and the uh, bid is going to be generated in a uh, PDF and attached to an email really quickly. So if we double click that, we can see all the bid details, the sales price and the total sales price here and no cost columns on that. So that's really helpful. All right. And that's pretty much it for, for the actual bids. We can navigate to any specific uh, estimates by clicking here and hitting, hitting enter, and that will navigate to a specific estimate. So getting to your estimates is very quick. One more screen I wanted to show you, and that is the list of estimates. And this is basically a list of all the estimates that you have created. If you want to view, you can see created by, last updated, um, expense markup, and labor markup. So it's really, really helpful if you want to take a look at that. And if you want to view or open any just uh, any estimate, you select on it and then click open the selected estimate and that'll take you right back there. 
Well, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, of course, please email us over at uh, support at laborburdencalculator.com. And uh, thank you very much. Yeah.